Howdy, it's Tubal Cain. Today the subject is band saws and I'm currently uh, sawing a piece of uh, two and a half inch round cold rolled steel off on my Wells band saw, my number eight Wells band saw, which I dearly love. Got a nice sharp blade in there and it's going to uh, complete its cut here momentarily and the machine of course will shut itself off. That sure beats a hand hacksaw, doesn't it? As a sidebar and a point of clarification, I get a lot of comments on my name, Tubal Cain. Of course, that's my uh, moniker or my, my nickname or my uh, pen name like Mark Twain used. But uh, Tubal Cain is taken uh, out of the Bible, Genesis 4.22. And uh, there's really only one verse that mentions him, but it's uh, he was the world's first ironmonger. Or in some versions of the Bible, it mentions that uh, he worked with bronze or brass. Uh, there was a Tubal Cain from England at all, England as well. I believe him to be passed on now, but he was a, quite a, a metal worker and model maker, and he uh, wrote several books on how to build steam engines. So, but that's how I get this name, uh, Tubal Cain. Uh, I get uh, comments of, uh, am I a traveler? I, I have no idea what people are talking about when they say, am I a traveler or, or, or a gypsy or something like that. I don't know what that means. But uh, I also have people that ask me, are you a, uh, a mason? So there must be some word that they use in the Masonic temple as well. But uh, I'm a Christian man, and this name Tubal Cain comes from the Bible. That's just a sidebar of clarification. There'll be several parts to this uh, bandsaw series, and I think probably two parts uh, for the horizontal cutoff saw, and then I'm going to go into my basement and show you the vertical saw, which is a little bit smaller. I'm also going to take a little field trip to the high school and show you a couple of the saws that I've got down here. But I really like this 8-inch uh, well saw, and I've had it for several years. I bought it used from an industry who, of course, outsourced, and now uh, everything is done in China or some forsaken land, but uh, 8 inch means that it will cut up to an 8 inch uh, pipe or 8 inch round. And Since I didn't have any uh, steel that large, I just stuck a piece of 8 inch cardboard in there to give you an idea of uh, the size. Now it will also cut up to 12 inches flat. So it will take uh, a plate up to 12 inches. That's how they size these saws. Now this uses a one inch wide blade and uh, the beauty of the wide blades is you get a straight cut and uh, they're very rigid. The entire frame on this thing is, uh, is cast iron. I think the design is very old but this uh, particular saw was probably made in the 70s from the looks of those stripes that you see on there. I've had it for about 10 years and uh, I think I've only used uh, two blades on it because I'm the only one that uses it and it doesn't get used every day. It's normally over in the corner of this old garage. I, I, I moved it out near the door where I'd get a little bit of light and I want to go over some of the features and some of the do's and don'ts when you use a cutoff saw. This saw uses uh, a blade that's 11 foot 6 inches long and this is one inch wide and this particular blade is an eight pitch meaning there's eight threads per inch. Now, I'm going to talk more about bandsaw blades later on because uh, that's a subject in itself but uh, the, the wide blade is really a nice feature. The smaller saws are only going to have a half inch blade and I'm more used to uh, three quarter inch wides on the Kalamazoo saws that I've dealt with over the many years but uh, and you can buy blades anywhere from $25 to $100 depending on what they're made of. We need to buy a blade uh, and use a blade that is a general purpose blade so we're not changing it all the time. It's quite a pain in the neck to change this with this big stiff uh, one inch blade. One thing that really annoys me if I may rant a little bit on uh, all of these saws that I've dealt with over the years and probably you too. They uh, put their name on there in great big letters but uh, Usually there's no mention made of the blade size until you go to a little plaque on it or, or you go to the owner's manual. But that's really the only important thing that I want. So I always mark them, usually much larger than this, uh, the, the length of the blade. Because uh, 
uh, it's just something you need to know and usually they're odd uh, sizes and if you have more than one saw they're hard to remember so I always write it right on there and they, they should do that and I, I'm scolding uh, the people that make these saws for not doing that. I love the vise on this saw, uh, quick acting. You simply lift this up and you can slide the jaw in and out. I better uh, move the camera a little bit here so I can show you on this side that it's how quickly you can move it in and out. And then once you uh, are up against your work, then uh, this doodad, whatever it's called, is in the notch and you can tighten it up with that nice big iron hand wheel. Not a little plastic knob that falls off first time you use it like some foreign brands, but a nice big 8 inch cast iron wheel that probably weighs 10 pounds and is up to the task. We have an automatic shut off right here so there's a micro switch right there. The actual power switch is on the other side. It's a magnetic switch. You can just see the, uh, the back of it there. I'll turn the saw around here in a minute. There's a 1 inch or a 1 horsepower uh, electric motor on here. It is 110 volt even though it came from a factory. A lot of them you're going to find are uh, three phase or 220 volt. This saw also has a stop for multiple cuts that uh, I don't think I've ever used it, but this will slide in and out and do about anything you want. The uh, big rod that it's on, of course, is a knee knocker, as it is on all the saws. We got nice ball bearing guides on this saw. Uh, blade guides. Now, blade guides are very important that you have high quality ones that are up to the task of keeping that blade uh, square. Uh, this vise will also swing at angles to cut uh, different angles. I've turned the saw around now so that uh, the lighting is on this side but you can see a big Westinghouse magnetic starter. Far more of a switch than what I need. And on this side you can see that I, I made a roller stand here many years ago so that when I'm holding longer stock that it's supported. Here is the hydraulic cylinder that controls the down speed. And uh, if you look here, we've got kind of a ratcheting mechanism that allows you to raise it and hold it and hold it in any position you want. That's kind of handy. There's a rod out here near the front right here that uh, operates that uh, mechanism. Some of these things are rather crude on this saw but so uh, workable. One other feature I'd like to show you here as the saw comes down there's a simple counterweight on the top, right here. It can be moved back and forth to control the amount of uh, pressure on the down feed. I usually use it uh, in the, about the position that you see now, and if it's something delicate, I kind of hand feed it as it comes down as well. Uh, very nice saw. I'm going to turn it around again.